Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time. Friday afternoon in lockdown. Um, uh, my name is Henk van Rensburg and um, I am from Roblox, South Africa, uh, also from Vermont Sales. Uh, we are the agents for the Southern Hemisphere in Africa, um, supplying and assisting and training and everything uh, uh, for Roblox Poland. So I'm going to get right into it. Uh, please ask questions afterwards. Uh, make notes and uh, we can try and see if we can help you. Um, when we get to the time uh, that I need to play the video, if it's not ready, I'll just speak to Jock and then I'm maybe just going to skip it. So today I'm talking to you about, guys about Roblox. Um, Roblox, the original inventors from the robot, is a topic. Um, and um, this year, Roblox is a hundred years old. So, when it comes to anchoring, these guys have invented it, they've done it, they've tested it. They pretty much know what they're talking about when, uh, when it comes to to um, to anchoring. Roblox based in Poland, and they also do uh, everything in um, the Roblox range uh, with all the different certification ETAs. I'll show you later. You know, we've got three factories there and everything from mining the steel for our anchors, chemicals for the bonded anchors, we are in complete control of it. Um, why this is important is because obviously at the end of the day, this is where we have anchoring insurance and uh, regarding safety is very important. And uh, so we, we stand behind the brand. Just a very quick history. I'm not going to go into it. Um, it's a lot. You know, as I said, uh, 100 years old. As a matter of interest, uh, Roll Plug invented the first hammer draw in 1912. So coming to what we're going to be speaking about today is the Robolt, the real McCoy. Um, the Robolt was invented in 1934, um, and it was the first ever mechanical anchor um, that was uh, invented in the world. Um, let me just move my thing here. I can also not see. So you'll see as we go when it uh, when it comes to the raw raw plug brand, the raw plug products. You know um, the governance and the quality um, that that is applicable because you're working with safety in the plumbing industry. Yes, it is applicable, but if you go and look at the bigger type of uh, buildings and towers and stadiums, this is where it, it, it really comes relevant. You know, so a few examples of the different um, specifications and certi uh, uh, certifications that we've got, you know, there they are. Um, you'll see there's ISO, to name a few, and then also the which we the ETA on the top left this one here okay which is the European approval standards okay all our data sheets our technical approvals um, our design loads everything basically comes um, comes from that and any information um, for reference or specifications you know um, you'll find on, on on those approvals. No, no. Sorry. Okay, so what does Roblox stand for? There's three main points. It is our product range. Um, anything, if, if later on, hopefully when we get a chance, we can handle some different uh, issues. And um, But our product range covers literally everything and more. Then training. Training, obviously, for the guys, whether it's on site, whether it's on a webinar, whether it's a retail customer, it doesn't matter. We're very big on training, understanding the product. And then also service. So um, today we're going to specifically be talking about heavy duty mechanical anchors. 
but specifically, as I mentioned, the raw book, the real one. Um, there will be a few of the anchors there that you will recognize as well, like the wedge anchors, otherwise known as the um, drop-in anchor. And something I'd really like to show you actually at the uh, next webinar, our concrete screw bolts. So just to quickly go into a little bit of detail, uh, why um, you should choose a mechanical anchor you know, now this is in uh, comparison to, for instance, a bonded anchor. If you, all the different type of anchorings that you do get, you know, the, the pros and cons of it, you know, um, and this is for the mechanical and anchor advantages. So the first advantage, obviously, is the possibility to apply a load immediately after setting your anchor, uh, other than, for instance, again, a bonded anchor where you, there's a time, uh, limit available that you need to wait before the chemical anchor is set and then you can then continue so with the uh, uh, any mechanical anchor you can basically continue immediately so you you don't have the time uh, time issue no need to use any accessories what they mean by that is again if you look at the bonded anchor or chemical anchor uh, you need to have a, a, a brush to clean the hole you need to have a pump you know, and you need to have a caulking gun to, to inject your chemical anchor, where with your mechanical anchor, you basically put it in the hole and you just fasten it with your spanner or your torque wrench or whatever you're going to be using. Now, this next one is very important. Um, um, the mechanical anchors, especially like with the real robot, it gives you great performance in cracked and non-cracked concrete. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that later on. And then also uh, through fixing capability. For instance, the fixture, or let's say, for instance, a geezer, you know, or um, you can can basically uh, uh, put your fixture on, your sleeve is in the wall, and you can just put it, push it through. Okay, so the selection of mechanical anchors. Let me just move this thing again. Sorry, it's in the way. Okay, so in order to choose the right anchor for particular applications, there are several key aspects to be considered. Now, this is also quite important. Um, also, hopefully at the later stage when we go into more detail, you know, on, on anchoring, we can discuss that. So environmental conditions, that is important. Okay, so not for the, for the average guy, but when you start looking at coastal regions, you know, um, this will be uh, important because of corrosion. And then obviously the type of steel that the mechanical anchor is made of and will have an effect, um, obviously, for, for service you're going to get out of the anchor. Then also very important is your base material. You know, when you are installing a fixture or a geyser or a heat pump, what is your base material or otherwise known as a substrate? Will it be installed in a concrete substrate, concrete wall? Is it a hollow brick wall? Um, is it a limestone wall? You know, or is it solid brick? You know, as an as, as example. So that is important. So you know if the uh, anchor can do its work or not. Obviously, again, on safety, you you if you're going to be installing a heavy fixture, you need to know what is the the substrate. So that your heat pump, for instance, doesn't fall off and you get injury. Anchor spacing and edge distances as well. Um, well I'll show you just after this slide again what that means is um, when you are anchoring, how far you're going to be from an edge, especially with an expansion anchor, because you've got different forces working into the substrate, it can break or crack. And then your load bearing capacity, what is the capability, what is the weight? of the anchor of what you're going to be um, anchoring. And then also your loading time. Okay, so here is uh, just some examples of your base materials. Now, uh, is it your, you, there you can see some pictures, you know, is it a cracked concrete, is, um, your non-cracked concrete. This is important, why this is important is because the function and the working of the anchor, you know, um, where robot will be applicable. Um, you know, and then is it this uh, hollow brick? Is it limestone? Is it solid brick? 
So just a quick example on your spacing, right? So obviously, if you you you, you know that what they've done there, you know, this is just an example. If you if you are, are close to an edge and you need to do a, a installation close to an edge, if you're going to be using a expansion anchor, you know, in this case, like with the robot, if it's close because of the forces, you know, it might break your edge or it can crack the concrete. And, and you can lose load, obviously, on whatever it is that you are anchoring. Um, then your loading types. Okay, so this is for us. I don't think it's too much important, but just so you know what it means, you, your um, your your lift, different loading types is what you um, the, for the guys that doesn't know your tension load or your shear load, or then you get both, which is combined. So. What is tension load? Tension load is if you take your drill, um, your drill machine, and you drill a hole, and you install your anchor, um, and you when you're going to be pulling it out, you put a pull test on it. When you when the force is exactly opposite to the direction of when where the anchor was installed, that is your tension load. Your shear load, for instance, is if when you will be hanging a geyser, then the forces applicable will, will they will be your shear loads because it's hanging at an angle, and then in other applications, obviously where you get your tension and your shear load combined. So let's jump straight into the product. So the robot is not an uncommon name. I mean, it, it is the it's the oldest uh, uh, anchor in the world. As I said, it's the first anchor in the world. As a, a very important um, um, fact is that the robot is the most copied bolt in the world. Um, so lots of guys, you know, lots of guys walk into wherever you are buying your your anchors. They ask you, you ask them for a robot, and they will give you whatever they give you. Uh, until we were in the country, pretty much you were buying a copy, right? So, and and that is part of the focus. I'd like to show you today is because what is the difference between the real McCoy and obviously the copies you know I have spent a lot of time with plumbers um, in the market and lots of the times when they see actually the robot and then they tell me straight listen this is a crap thing you know so the in certain instances the copies did damage the the name which is robot there's only one you know and the and the rest is all shield and expansion anchor copies but the reason they they think it's a crap thing is because they've been using copies you know so sometimes if you if you put it in the wall you know it, when you fasten it it spins it doesn't grab or it breaks you know and or if you need to to, to um, take it out and put it back you take this uh, you pull the sleeve out and it actually disintegrates you know so that is the differences okay cool so um, again, as you can see there on our uh, on our EPI approvals, it is again cracked and non -cracked, non cracked concrete. The availability of the range in the diameters is available from M6 to M24. Uh, just as a matter of interest, also lots of the time the guys ask me, "Oh, but how strong is it? How much load can this thing take? Who stark is it?" So if you just a little uh, information there on the right, um, if you see on that loads there, and um, this the, this the, the the testing was done there in um, C25 concrete. Okay, so on the top is your tension load, which is your minimum of six kilonewton, and up to uh, thirty kilonewton. Now, to give an example for those guys that doesn't know, one kilonewton is equal to 100 kilograms so on your tension load it's from 600 kilograms to three tons and on your shear load as i remember as i explained when it, it's hanging and you've got a 90 degree force it's from 500 kilograms to about six tons um, in certain applications where they still use this mechanical anchors you know uh, fire resistance is very important um, and we are fire rated as class one. Um, as a as a norm and a standard, when robots are manufactured, 
you know, they come out with a zinc plate coating. So, as previously mentioned, Robolt was the first mechanical anchor in the world, and it was invented in 1934. Um, yeah, and over the years, it, it, it's definitely proven itself. Um, so, also, again, there you can see just some of your different substrates. Also important, you can, the, the, the robot is certified, you can use it in natural stone or hollow brick. Um, Jock, is that video right? Uh, so, I think at the moment it is not ready yet. Um, okay, no problem. I can forbid. Let me, let me just see maybe if I'm, or if I have the screen control, then. Don't uh, stress, it's cool. No. Otherwise, Don't you can worry. play it in your screen and then they can see it if you want to. Then it will so just be without the sound. Okay, I'm going to hear the sound, so I'm going to not be able to talk. But let, uh, I'm going to show you the video quick. Okay, so you have to excuse me. I'm, I'm going to hear the sound, so I'm not going to be able to talk. But let me, we all know the robot, and but let me just quickly show you the video. So let me try it. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. Um, as you see, they've now drilled a hole. They've cleaned it straightforward. You put your sleeve in the wall, and you basically go and you add your bolt. Jock, can you let me work? Yes, we can still hear you. Okay, donkey. Sorry, guys, it's my first time, so... <laughs> So it's a little bit unexpected. So, so yes. I say, we are back. So, with any anchor um, in a solid substrate, very important. Uh, when you are drilling your hole, you need to clean it. Okay, you need to get the dust and the dirt out. Okay, um, and then do the installation, put your sleeve in, put your fixture in, and put your bolt in. Um, so, as you can see on these steps here. Now, I'm just going to quickly mention this. When it comes to anchoring, your drilling is crucial. Okay, so. Because of the engineering side of it and the safety factor, not too much for our, for the for our guys, you know, and the plumbing guys and so on on the on the ground. This is more for safety, you know. When you start again doing stadiums and you start doing big towers like the Burj Khalifa Tower in Dubai, for as an example, is all done with raw plug. But it is important, you know. So the quality of the drill bit that you're using is definitely important. Now that are what I have seen. A lot of the times people buy the anchor, doesn't matter whether it's a light fixing or a robot, sometimes the guys go and they buy a bigger drill bit. You know, so as an example, let's say you take a normal hammer in fixing, a guy buys a normal hammer in fixing, then he buys a 9 or 10 millimeter drill bit, okay? So, um, that is why it's important to use a proper drill bit, okay? So, where like as an example here, yeah, open when it comes in, you know, um, it is also a, a, a certified robot which carry the certificates, okay, um, the PGM certificate and the Shika Safe certificate. What that basically means is that when you buy a 6 or 12 or, or 20 or 24 millimeter robot, doesn't matter, what you're buying is what you're getting. So, it's it, it's a guarantee. So you want to draw an 8 mm hole or a 16 mm hole, that is what you're going to get. And that is very important for anchoring in order to do to let the anchor do its job properly. Okay, another reason why this is important. So if you are working at the old building, for instance, you have to change a basin, 
Uh, you have to change a geezer, whatever it needs to be done. And and you you want that. You you, you need the precision. You know, um, because if you're going to be drilling and your hole is going to be bigger, it can cause, especially if you're using fakes, fake anchors. This is this um, this is where your anchor will start spinning in the hole, or you will not have the proper anchorage that you're supposed to get. So just a little bit of recap quickly. So Robolt was the first ever mechanical anchor in the world for runner of all the later solution uh, for using cracked and non-cracked non concrete with all the ETAs and the European approval that goes with that. Now this again can be used in hollow core slabs. It's certified for it. Flooring, blocks and ceramics, okay, which copies cannot do, okay. Um, product recommended for applications requiring fire resistance, three-piece expanding sleeves provides maximum expansion to ensure optimum loads and safety are achieved in various substrates. And then as we said, from M6 to M24. Just as a very interesting uh, observation, if you go to Poland and you go to the factory, you know, the robots, it, they still assemble it by hand, you know, and, and if you see the, the quality uh, testing and the, the phases of raw plug when they are doing, like for instance, the raw, um, the raw bolt, anything they do, it is, it's really amazing to see the quality and the control um, that is from the, from the steel, every stage until the finished product, it, it, it gets checked and it gets tested. You know, um, as I said previously, um, we've got the three factories in Poland and it's a risk-free product. Okay, why I say that is because we're in charge of from mining the steel right through to ending up in the shelf and you as the customer is buying it, you know, it, it, there's insurance of this. It, our product is, is, is guaranteed, you know. So touch wood, it never happened, you know, but, but should you have, like, for instance, an accident on site or, you know, some serious damage, this is where this comes in. Um, if some of, uh, let's say, for instance, a contract plumber, you know, um, they need to do or tend a, a big job, you know, and I get my hands on the uh, bowls of quantities once, uh, or then whoever sends it back to you. The first thing I always do, you know, obviously, except for the, the, the ETA, the data sheets that I attached, you know, just to give you an example. So there's the data sheet. Okay. Okay, so this will, with, with whoever is sending you, the price for your tender okay so you'll be getting the uh, the data sheet as well as the european approval uh, i'm not going to go into too much detail on this it's a lot so but that's how it looks so you'll be i'll be giving you that to also attach but as with these two documents i will then give you the insurance papers for it where um, you can literally go in and um, hand in your tender with your data sheet with your uh, European approvals plus the insurance papers, you know. So if you're quoting against Mickey Mouse that is using inferior products, you know, and he, he's cheaper because he's using a, a three rank, three rank fixing instead of the real McCoy, you know. Um, so you've got that peace of mind. It's it's that's what it is, you know. So we stand behind our products. Um, already discussed that we can use it in various substrate and wide variety of fixtures now this one also this slide is quite important what i want to show you here you know there's the robot we've been talking about but this one the projecting wall. now when when i started moving into the plumbing industry you know lots of guys asked me for the projecting wall. now the reason i want that one is um what they explained to me is when they are alone and installing a geezer the problem they've got is when they use the robot you know to to actually put the geezer on and line it up and and do it where with the projecting bulb they just put it straight through Boop, and it's done you know so it is available you know the uh, the the guys asked me to get it into the shops which i've done but uh, not many guys is actually uh, buying it the robot is still the one that moves mostly the guys that does use it and then this one uh, as a matter of interest this is a, it's a handy little um, sleeve you can see there 
it's flanged. It's got like a plastic flange there. Where this is applicable if you are you, if you are drilling into a hollow substrate or hollow brick wall, or it's like a you may be putting a, a, a vertical installation that basically uh, stops your sleeve from from falling into the hole of falling behind the the wall into the hollow brick and 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 you lose it. One second. Okay, so. Um, just as an example, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, where the people still use the, 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 the most useful, the expansion anchors, you know, um, is on geysers and heat pumps. Okay, so so that's pretty much at the moment the, 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 the biggest ones that I know of. Um, just uh, something to mention, we are busy with QuickOt at the moment, um, we are close. You know, it will be approved by Quickot. We'll, we'll have to, we'll have permission to um, to also use it. You know, approved by Quickot, and then also we're looking. We'll see what happens. It's in in the legal department at the moment. You know, but also to 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 see how this will be applicable when you actually doing a wall on installation or you're installing a heat pump. You know, and when you're using the anchor, it's the the real McCoy. You know, so because You've got all the ETH, you've got the, the sands, you've got the rules, you've got the regulations, the SABS. Then you do the installation and they use basin fixation bolts to, to put the geyser in or they use a, a substandard anchor. So you've done everything right and up to the installation where you have to anchor the geyser or the heat pump as an example. And it falls down. There it goes. There, there goes the time, the insurance and everything. You know, so... So again, as I said, if this, if we are, we will stand um, stand behind the brand. What uh, the idea is, what we're looking at, obviously, let's uh, you know, you'll use the, the real McCoy Robo. There is other options. Make no mistake. There's a lot of other options that you can use that we've got in the in the range. For instance, a a, a geyser installation or a heat pump installation. Hopefully, we can get a chance so I can show it to you next time. But if there is a problem, you know, um, we stand behind the brand, you know, so you, you, you send the details, you know, and, and uh, that is where your insurances and your warranties came in that I have uh, spoken to you before. Right. Explain. Oh, come on. So I'm just battling with this. Yeah, cool. Ah, there we go. You know, so just on sense, you know, um, when it comes to the geyser installation, um, I'm sure you all know it. I'm not going to spend time on it. But yeah, so brackets and clips shall be securely fixed in one of the following ways. You know, so so yes, uh, that is that is my story. Thank you very much. Jock? Right. Yes, thank you very much, Inc. Um, just to let you know, the video was fine with that uh, that video thank you uh, can i give you some questions for you Please, to yeah. answer right <laughs> what is the difference to use a 14 millimeter u pack plug and a 12 millimeter couch screw oh, yeah. well to answer your question i'm not gonna there's a place in the sun for everybody i'm not too familiar with all the opposition products and so forth because i'm specialist in raw uh, in raw plug but what i can tell you what we do have available i don't think i've got a picture uh, i'll go and have a look now what we do have available is um the four or plug technology now this is a uh um completely different section uh which which will take a, a webinar but something that you definitely need to see so i'm going to just show you what i'm talking about because um, the plug and coach screw that I'm talking about at the moment, it's available in a 14 millimeter uh, plug with a coach screw. Let me just find it here quickly. So I can show you. I, I think um, if it's okay, let me quickly show how much time have I got, Jock? Uh, we still have about 15 minutes left. Okay, I'm going to... Okay. Uh, it was no, no, it was not on the plan, but I'm just going to quickly show you a video, okay? Because 
one of the options that we've got, um, rather than using the, the actual raw bolt, is the four all plug technology, you know, um, in a 14 millimeter, which is much cheaper. You know, it's very strong, you know, for instance, a heat pump or a gizzard installation. You know, but I just need to to show you what the um, what the technology does, uh, and that can maybe answer your question. Uh, one second, I'm just looking for it quickly. Okay, so this is our four all plug. Oh man, wrong button. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to show you the whole video. I'm going to skip through it. So this is a raw plug, four all plug. It's a nylon plug, not plastic. You know, and um, in theory, this is probably the only plug you will ever need. Uh, I'm going to forward, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. There you can see some history, Statue of Liberty, uh, the manufacturing. Okay, so um, in a normal installation, this is what happens. And I want you to see what our plug does. Now, this is in, in drywalling. Uh, Okay, so in in short, what I could find now is that is um, what up it it makes a knot. All right, I just want to quickly check something else. Sorry, just hold on one second. I'm just looking for it. It was actually the wrong one. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, man. I'm sorry, this is the same one. Okay. Sorry, this is this one. Okay, so, so as an example, now you, you're drilling into a wall. You do not always know uh, what is behind the plaster, what is, if it's not an, a, a new building. So I just want you to see what it does in brick. The previous example was in, you, you saw what the plug does uh, when you install it. it uh, normally the, the, the plug spin. So this is in a, in a hollow brick. Joe, can you let's see? Uh, yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you. So. There you can see what happens, okay, and this is basically what the plug does. Okay, so for instance, down a brick wall. Now, this is a very good solution for drywalling. You know, same principle, you saw a bit of it now, but in depending on your application, um, this you can also be using in drywalling. So that is what the plug says, for all. You can use it literally for anything, for everything. You know. Um, I just want to show you this part. I'm not going to bother with the concrete and all the rest. Okay, so again, there we go. Okay, so now that plug there we've got available in um, in the 14 millimeter with coach screw. Um, and what the guys have been doing, this actually started in Zambia. I was uh, in, based in Zambia a long time anyway. Everything there is hollow, you know, and um, that's why that one is very, very popular because you can, they they hang geezers with it, you know, we've got the same technology in the basin fixation bolt sets as well, where you can, if you've got a hollow wall or anything, you know, that is the plug you're going to use. Or for instance, if you need to do installation on wood, if you're building a lodge or you're or doing maintenance on a lodge, 
you know, and it's a wall on geese or basin or something like that, or accessories, or you know, that that plug pretty much covers it. Did I answer the question? Uh, yeah, I think so. The next one, how do I know which raw bolt is the real thing? Okay, that is a very good question. That is a very, very good question. So, um, with raw bolt being around as long as they were, and obviously the most copied bolt in the world, you know, um, the first thing is you won't find it anymore except if it's really, really old stock, okay? It's a white zinc flate coating. That is the first thing, okay? So any um, expansion anchor that you find in copper or bronze or some funny color, it's not robot. Okay, the real robot has got a light zinc coating and it will say usually roll on, on the bolt itself. Okay, so good copies, yes, you do get it. Um, you do get uh, the, the copies that, that's, that's actually quite difficult. But because they use shortcuts, um, they lose use less material. So let me quickly show you on the ETA. You know, the way you'll see that, okay, the first thing is you take a picture and you send it to us or to me. It will be 10 to 1 be able to tell you. Uh, but the other one is if you go and measure. Um, I mean, everything is according to European standards. So um, you've got the lengths. Is it this one? Um, you've got the lengths exactly. Uh, on the design, if, if, if you actually measure it, or if I come to site or wherever and you measure it, uh, we'll be able to tell you. Uh, but offhand, for the guys um, that walks in, if the color is different, okay, seldom you will still find the old, uh, it used to be in like a darkish bronze color, but that's like really, really old, you know, um, and, um, and it should say raw, you know, so. Uh, it's been a while since I actually saw a fake copy robot that said roll on it. You know, usually it is just because it costs money to to punch it. You know, um, so the cheaper the copies is, the better, and the more they they flood it into the market. You know, so so yes, that that's offhand. It's it's the color and and also even the weight. Actually, another important thing that I touch on sometimes. This is actually a very good one. In the middle of the um, of the shield, the three parts, there's there's a wire, okay, that keeps the parts together. Now it's it's simple. If you take your pinky nail, and you you can take off most of the time, you can take off that little piece of wire in the middle that keeps the shield together, uh, the sleeve together. You can take it off of your pinky, and it uh, your pinky nail, and it disintegrates. With the real robot, you know, it's a mission to get that wire off. You you can circle. 